Hello there, Todd Sawatsky here, owner and lead appraiser of Todd Sawatsky Appraisals, where I specialize in sports memorabilia. And welcome to TSA 101 for On the Bench with Beaks, where I put a twist on the appraisal process while showing you some fun and hopefully interesting hockey collectibles. Today is not so much a brand new topic. My last video on jerseys, and I hope you did enjoy that one, and this is more of an extension on that, not about what do you think it's worth, but how to care for and take care of your prized possessions. I am currently wearing my Ottawa Senators jersey. This is not just any jersey. This is the Beer Wolf jersey. So, as you can tell, even the custom jerseys can be a lot of fun, even if it's not your favorite team. But hell, it's the Beer Wolf, so who cares? All right, so let's start getting talking about treating your jerseys, how to care for them. Um, I have a few different jerseys here behind me. And for example, let's take this wonderful Mark Shifley jersey here. Oh, and there goes my Yager. So once again, if you don't drop it, you're not having fun. So this is my 2016 era Mark Shifley jersey. This is not a pro style, as you may see on the back. You do not see anything. However, it is actually stitched on, so that is a nice, good quality jersey. However, if you like to wear this jersey, especially like I do, there are different ways to take care of this thing. For starters, you might notice the hanger that it's on. This is a plastic hanger. If you use plastic or wood hangers, it actually supports the jersey quite well. Here's another example of a plastic hanger, of course. Then again, you got these guys, the old aluminum hangers here. These guys, is just look at the width of those in comparison. Look how small it is. Typically, these are the items that if you are like me and are lazy, I take these to the dry cleaner. That's what I like to do. I rather spend $10, get it nice, get it pressed right, and it'll look fantastic for you for years to come. But then again, there's a lot of collectors out there, a lot of jerseys where, jer jersey wearers out there that will wash their own jersey. Because, let's face it, it's cheaper, you know? You wear it too often, it can get pretty pricey. The best thing you can do is when you wash it, look at all these vibrant colors. Especially with this being a white jersey, it's a great example. Not so much in the crest or logo, but even in the striping over here. These can bleed out. Those colors can bleed out when you're washing. So one of the first tips is always wash cold. Make sure that it's cold water that you wash it. Secondly, you also never want to put it in the dryer. After you wash it in cold water, you will want to air dry it. However, before you get to the air drying, before you put it in the washer, the first real tip is Turn it inside out. You want to be able to protect those colors. You want to be able to protect those logos. Turn this bad boy inside out. And if you have a nice quality washer as well, not necessarily a spin agitator, I recommend even putting it one step further, washing it on delicate. Still keep it cold, but your logo will look great. If you got lettering and stitching, it'll stay great. And you will be able to clean your jersey for a significant period of time. And it'll always continue to look as bright and vibrant as it did to begin with. A fantastic example of what happens when you wash it too much, when you don't always wash it in cold and when you don't always turn it inside out is my nostalgic 1990s Pittsburgh 
Penguins jersey. It, as you can tell by the logo, it is crumpled to shit. There's a lot of fraying on the logo and everything else. This also happens to be a customized, however, a pressed jersey. Those numbers are air or uh, steam pressed on the back. So when it was first pressed, it looked absolutely fantastic. Over the years, as you can see, and with the numerous washings and dryings, those numbers will get cracked and they will chip off. And in fact, there's probably a few little flecks of yellow already on the floor just by bringing this thing down. So a fantastic way to prove the inside out, cold water, do not air, or air dry, do not put in the dryer, will go a long way. Another fantastic thing is, is what if your jersey smells? Now this one I actually had to do a little bit of look up and thank you Daniel for a couple of fantastic tips on this one. Because I don't like to wash them myself, because I like to go to the dry cleaner because I'm more lazy than anything, the best way to do it is same technique, turn it inside out, put it but you're gonna to want to rotate. You're gonna, it's gonna take a few different washings. So for example, if you get a jersey, you happen to find out you got a fantastic deal on eBay and next thing you know, well, it was probably in the home of a chronic smoker. It's gonna stink. It's gonna smell like smoke. And let's face it, when you wear it, you're smelling it the whole time. People around you can smell it the whole time. So the best thing to do same technique, cold water, turn inside out, put it in the washing machine, but in, for the first cycle, do not use detergent. In fact, use distilled white vinegar. You'll put it through the cycle, you'll get it come, it'll come out, you'll probably give it a smell and it'll probably still stink a bit. And of course, you'll have that little extra vinegar smell on it too. Run it another cycle, this time with detergent and if you bring it out and it smells fantastic air dry it once again air dry it, everything in between um, and if it smells fantastic your job is done but if it's really rank you keep rotating it you keep doing it in cycles distilled vinegar one load air dry detergent air dry, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, literally, literally, literally. So that is a good way to get the stench out of your jerseys. Now, once again, what I'm showing off is one of the jerseys that I personally like to wear. This is not a game jersey. This is a fan, a more of a fan style of jersey, whether it be professional or semi-pro, this one being semi-pro. If you have game jerseys, that or heck, let's, before I go into game jerseys, let's get into autograph jerseys. And I'm just gonna grab my Mark Shifley one right over here. Had you not seen one of my videos before, you will find out very quickly, I am a Winnipeg Jets fan. This is my 2011 era Mark Shifley jersey, customized. And as you can see, it is signed. What is the first thing that happens to me and my jerseys after they get signed? I stop wearing them. What better way to protect your investment than preventing it from getting dirty and stained? If you put this through the wash, this autograph, even if you are doing it, the tried and true, inside out, maybe even detergent free, just to see if something gets out. This is going to bleed. This is going to wear. This is going to discolor. Um, if you're an autograph collector, you've now ruined the autograph. In fact, you've lowered the value of your jersey now. Another interesting technique, and this is also another fantastic... This is being the signed one. Let's grab my Yager one here. My 
Czech Republic Yager jersey. If I wanted to get this thing signed, this is a jersey I do like to wear from time to time. However, if I wanted to get it signed, and this is a fantastic example in comparison to this guy here. You can see the dark lettering on this one. If this is signed, for example, in silver, this is going to really pop out. It's going to it's going to look fantastic. The most common area to get a jersey signed, especially by a specific player as opposed to a whole team, it is the number. Whether it be the six or the eight, it's often carte blanche what the, uh, the person wants. However, there is a technique that you can do to condition a white lettering um, on the back of a jersey. Take your average hairspray, preferably unscented, and you would want to spray that number. Let it dry. Takes about 5-10 minutes, especially if you're about to go to the signing. Do it ahead of time. What you're doing is you're conditioning the letter so when it does get signed, as my Mark Shifley one here can contest, there is no bleeding into the lettering. The letters actually, this is a different material than the rest of the jersey. So even if you have my, you know, this is a going away present, by the way, um, that I had. But as you can see on the regular part of the jersey, it being signed, you're always, it's always going to soak into the material. That's the point. But it's not bleeding. On the letters, it will bleed. Black, blue, red. These numbers soak up that ink. So if you spray it down with the um, uh, uh, hairspray first, it will actually prevent the bleeding of the signature into the jersey. So now you're having a higher quality autograph on your thing. You're actually technically increasing the value of it. Now we are going to get into a totally different topic. We are going to go into the game used jerseys. And I'm going to grab this bad boy right here first. Not even first, but this is going to be my example. As you can see, uh, with those other jerseys, I have them on wood hangers. It helps drape off the jerseys a bit better, less stretching. Game used jerseys are particularly special, and this one happens to be autographed as well. Um, it's not on the number, as you can see. But because it's a game used jersey, and that's what I absolutely love about this guy, you can see all those stick marks, um, possibly puck marks, um, player getting hooked, getting hit by the puck, blocking a shot. This is what makes game used jerseys special. So not only the provenance, as in it's been used in an actual event, an actual game, uh, that is another factor that can, if you can pinpoint as to when a game was used or a, when a jersey was used, um, and that's where a lot of COAs kind of come from, but you can also find that in pictures as well for gamers, it will actually increase the value. And how do they figure out what jersey was used in that photo? They use these marks as examples. These marks help tell the story. So if you want to clean, get rid of the smell of this bad boy, I would recommend for breeds. I'll be honest. You don't want to put this guy in the washing machine because if you put it in the washing machine, you might remove the history from the game. You might remove the, um, uh, the evidence that it was actually used in the game you might actually damage the logos the numbers everything else all in the process so i recommend not washing these guys now do you always appreciate the smell no one of the techniques the hockey hall of fame actually uses to kill the bacteria it may not take the smell completely, but it will kill the bacteria to prevent molding, especially with the sweat and stuff that comes, comes off of these things. 
is they freeze them. They literally fold them up and I will show you a way to protect if you want to store them folded. Definitely do not crease the logos or anything, but they'll actually freeze them. They'll put them in a freezer. They'll put it in a plastic bag, put it in a freezer. They let it sit for a week. They take it out. They let it sit out of there for a week, similar to the wash, you know, the vinegar detergent thing for the regular jersey. You do that, you know, freeze, unfreeze, freeze, room temperature, freeze, room temperature. Give it a couple of goes um, and it will actually kill the bacteria that is living within the jersey while not having to wash it and removing these, what I call, beautiful stains, beautiful markings that make game used jerseys so special. So um, from that perspective, I think that is the best way of doing it. Uh, of course, if you want to, similar to, I, I'm kind of a bit of a weird one. I, I will actually wear these sometimes out to games. Uh, however, if I'm eating, the jersey comes off. It goes into a bag. If um, I'm traveling to and from, the jersey stays off. But as soon as I'm at, before I go to the game, I'll throw it on and I'm careful with what I eat. I don't go for the things that could potentially leave stains on the jersey. Um, you can always do those little temporary spot cleans if you really have to. Um, knock on wood, I haven't had to do that yet. But um, that spot cleaning also will work. Um, and you don't necessarily want to bleach a jersey especially whether it be white or something along these, because guess what? Is this true white? Was it intended to be true white? Or is there always a little bit of a hue, almost a cream color in there? Uh, by bleaching it, it also can potentially damage the jersey more as well. And that goes with all types of jerseys, whether they're white or not. Um, so from that perspective, I hope you enjoyed these... Uh, oh. Oh yes, and my wonderful videographer had to remind me. As you can see with my Gretzky jersey here, and granted, this is not a perfect example as to what to do and how, and how to have it framed. This is how I received it. The jersey is what impressed me more than the actual framing. This was not a quality frame. You can see it pulling apart. This was very common in the 90s, how they framed it, the style. But due to the sheer weight of this, the edges are now pulling apart a bit. Also, you will see another um, sign of quality framing is here there's some matting. And you might take a look along the matting. And thankfully, this looks okay. Um, when there's white, if you see it discolor, especially in time, and it doesn't matter whether it's a matting of a jersey or even a photograph, if you see the matting or the lines within it, this will always stay the normal color, but that um, edge that gets usually lasered cut, um, if that starts to discolor, that means there's acid in the matting. So if it is pressed right up against something, like a card, photo, otherwise, it will actually damage that item. You don't want acid. You want things to be acid-free. Um, majority of all collectibles, uh, framing shops, those are the materials they use now, but they may not have back in the day. Um, another thing is the glass. If you're getting it framed professionally, make sure they use UV protected glass. Now that will, if I also do not recommend having this item sitting in a high light source, especially sunlight. Um, if you want to have spotlights on it, that's one thing. Direct sunlight will discolor your items. It doesn't matter. Once again, Jersey photo, otherwise, um, but it is a way to help protect your jersey. So if you do want to buy something, if you see, if you recognize that it appears to be a quality 
framing job, the jersey or whatever item happens to be in that frame will tend to be in much better shape than something that kind of looks like this. And uh, once again, I didn't buy it for the frame. I bought it for the jersey inside. I just haven't got around to reframing it because um, as you may have noticed, uh, sometimes money goes elsewhere. <laughs> However, I hope these tips helped you. Um, a big thank you to my lovely wife and videographer, Tiffany. Um, a huge thank you to, of course, the boys from On the Bench with Beaks for uh, helping me bring these uh, tips, tricks, and, uh, of course, the uh, TSA 101 brand to you. And uh, once again, uh, if you ever have any questions, please feel free, drop me a line. You can get a hold of me at toddsawatskiappraisals at gmail.com. I am found also under the moniker Todd Sawatsky Appraisals on Instagram, Facebook, and um, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you do have any questions, I will be sure to try to add those into my videos in the future. Thank you again and good night.